Again, one of the goats is like, you know Ooh. what? Sand for prepare, because I'm going to destroy you to bits. And with that, we're jumping straight into the drafting phase. Falcon AB brand, blue side. Team Liquid Echo, red side. Falcon AB brand, batting out the Valentina, batting out the Boxia, and LTLBH, batting out the chip, as well as the Harif. The first two picks of FCAP already reveals to me that they want to go Assassin. Baksha out farms Assassins, typically. Um, it, early game is difficult to play against. Of course, if you get through the early game, you have very strong scaling with the Assassins. But yeah, Valentine as well as Basha, they're both anti-Assassins. Yeah. That's what I said earlier, right? I think for Falcon's AP brand, they understand that they have a massive advantage when it comes to the hero pool in the jungle. So they want to try to utilize that now by banning some of the picks from Carl TZ, mm -hmm. taking away the Baksha. Because right now, it does feel like for utility jungles, it's really just Baksha. Yeah. It's really just Baksha at this point. Maybe sometimes you pick up uh, Akai, which is, you know, TLPH likes yeah. to pick up, but that is uh, going to be one of their deep pocket picks. It's going to be the Arlot, very natural ban. Um, FCAP might be eyeing for a Roger here. There's the Loi ban. So Roger is the best pickup. Then maybe TLPH just goes back to the uh, Teresa as well as the Moskov. Okay. I think for the first pick, though. The fact that the Roger, 70% win rate, LaFell. You said it was 70%. Actually, it was 70% pick rate. I feel like the win rate is actually a bit higher. With then 70? Yeah. Huh. That's the fact that it's so scary. good, it's so good as a flex pick. It's a great hero in both jungle yep. and gold lane. I think equally as good right now. We've seen so many different players play it in different roles. Yep. It's so far worked out so well in the knockout stages. So not strange to see that Roger first pick for yep. Falcons AP Brent. I believe this could be Moscow of Edith or Moscow of Teresa. Um, I would say though, if you're looking at a Moscow, you want to get the Edith to go with it. There it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. Wolf doing wolf things as usual, you know? I really like the Moscow pick. Yeah. I think a lot of people will be kind of like pushed away from the Moscow pick yeah. in the first phase after seeing the Roger. But yeah. knowing that the Roger is such a good flex pick, you really got to get your hands on the Moscow because yeah. for Falcons AP Bren, there's nothing stopping them from going Roger and then Moscow later yeah. to deny that pick away. But now there we can reveal Roger's going gold. It's a Ling pick and the Terizla. That's right. The best hero in the XP when it comes to zero resource. You don't need resources right. on this guy. Exactly. So good answer. Obviously, we have revealed that this Roger is going to the gold you have the Ling. Now for TLPH, typically they answer this with a Ooh. Julian, but now we have seen in the group stages, the pocket pick was the Akai. I believe that if they pick up the Moskov, the typical answer for TLPH to go with it is a utility jungler because you don't want to take away the farm from the Moskov, especially because Moskov is a split push type of hero as well. You, for example, the Lord does. Imagine the Lord does. You're just going to be using the SOD. Yeah, and right now, honestly, I got to ask the casters here. What do you guys think of the first three picks for Falcon's AB brand as well as TLPH? Honestly, I wasn't expecting it, LaFell. Echo taking a more passive stance for now. In the meantime, hopefully they have something that's going to scale on top of that Moskov as a secondary insurance. I'm surprised that Liquid Echo had to revert to the Akai this early. I'm not so sure if uh, FCAP expected this, if this is what Coach Trevor and Coach Ducky wanted. Yeah, honestly, I was surprised that the Akai has been picked quite early as well. And now we're looking at the bands here. Well, what do you feel about the Angela as well as the Fireman's yeah. band for TLBH? Yeah, uh, uh, Moskov, uh, Angela, Angela Ling is very scary, so you don't want to give that for sure. But it seems like uh, the Fireman's is uh, uh, a Sanji, uh, sorry, a few special that actually pro provide provides them a lot of, uh, not really sustain, but a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, ways to really dive into the back lines. Imagine the Fireman's there is the, with the Roger. I think uh, you're always going to be going into the back lines with that. So that's probably why they banned it. Um, without the Yuzhong, you usually go for a Paquito now for TLPH. Um, but, the, but they go far side. So, okay, so it's yeah. pretty standard. I mean, like, keeping the Edith still a flex, can't go to Rome, can't go to the EXP. Right. For now, Falcons, AP Brand, they're missing their mid. Potentially missing their, wow. their, their Roamer as well. Yeah, I think the Farsa pick is great here. You know, they've already banned out the Faramis, the Angela, yeah. so two mid laners away from few. And we did say earlier as well, before the draft even started, that you yeah. want to try to maximize the potential you have in the mid lane yeah. on Sanji. Force few on a hero that can make a mistake. You yeah. try to capitalize on that here in the draft. Could be. Yeah. And right now, honestly, casters watching this draft live, seeing this Farsa pick, Falcons AP Bread, what do they need to do to respond? Well, I think that Falcons AP Bread, they've got enough ways to actually start taking out the Feathered Airstrike. Maybe a second insurance policy on top of that is going to be great. Like a minute. Oh, yep, there's the Minotaur as well. Hopefully, we do get some Wait, damage. Julian. Mid Julian? Yep, a few special. 
Oh my goodness, mid Julian. So now Wolf seeing this draft. Yeah. What else are the answers? I mean, like, this Julian is a surprise. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, partners, but you know, we expect it. I think um, for FCAP, they want to dive. For TLPH, they just want to go for Protect One around this Moscow. Thank you very much to both our analysts, Mirko, as well as Wolf. You guys have done an amazing job. And with that being said, we're throwing over to our casters for the first game of the semifinals. Casters, take it away. Decisive action is required this game. Similar to LaFell's hair, they must decide whether to stay straight or throw a curl. This is going to be a best of five of a lifetime here. Today, it's going to be me getting Kuhn as well as Leo at the desk to keep you guys company for this match. At your service, we'll be bringing you the starter to what could be a grand finals caliber matchup. I think everyone in the Amazon arena is expecting that much. Everyone watching around the world. And talking about decisive of action. I like how neither team had to take their time with the draft. I think they all knew what was coming even before the opponent got the pick. They were blitzing through it, right? That's what we want to see here. And similar as we get into the land of Dawn, players are loaded up. It's going to be Falcons AP Bren on the blue side up against Liquid Echo on red. It's been a while since we've seen few on this Julian. Uh, a lot of the Julians in MSC from uh, the group stage to the knockouts now have been in the jungle and they've been good. And now I want to see how a uh, melee ranged uh, mid might work because look, they send him home early. Yep, I think, you know, a lot of it comes with a bit of sacrifice. Yes, you have some good CC, you're a big toolbox as a mid laner, but more importantly, in the earlier stages, you're not gonna have a lot of control over that mid lane. Yep, and that's trouble for Kyle Tz and Ogwen. Look at that, Kyle Tz struggling to get the farm up, going quickly, going from the purple down to that small camp all the way, while Again, Ogwen sent home too. I think they're just taking shifts. Yep, I mean, that's the beauty of it all, right? I mean, if you dies here, then it's going to be a lot of trouble for the rest of the team. I'm expecting Liquid to try and play around that priority. So that's why we see that the side laners from FCAP being very, very aggressive whenever Kyle is nearby. Yep, Kyle here just uh, taking that crab, checking if uh, Benny Cutie is free for the taking. JP watching out for the flank. All right, that's the gold lane situation. I think uh, Marco's doing well. Up top, how about that? Flap versus Sanji. Oh, mm. Sanford, rather. Yeah, this is going to be a little interesting, right? Because Sanford, especially when you're Paquito into Terizla, generally Terizla can control this lane clear much faster than you in the earlier stages of the game. And then once you start rolling around mid, it's a bit of a toss-up, right? It's all off of that very first turtle, who's walking away with more gold at the end of it. Uh-huh. Now it's spawning in uh, just a few seconds. Kyle Tizi can make his way there. That is Carl Tz as well, making a beeline, rushing his way with Sanji right next to him. And I think Few is trying to get to level four. Not that he needs it, but I think that just the scaling of his skills will help. Oh, absolutely, right? I mean, he needs to make sure that Flap Tz is also like in control of this lane. More oh. importantly, at least they do this, deny this. Kyle is attempting Grand Theft Purple. He does get it, trading out for the turtle. Carl Tz secures. Ogwin at less than half health. That's a non-starter. Neither team drawing first blood just yet. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking whether Carl actually wants to go for the invade, but it looks like they're not going to do it. That's going to be one potential camp that they could fight later down the line. But at the same time, right, both Ogwin and as well as Few, making sure that they're sticking together because, again, not a lot of wave clear in the mid lane, allowing TLPH to make that first rotation. And a lot of those rotations are ending up in bottom. Whether you like it or not, there's a brewing fight there. Uh, there has been for the past couple of minutes. It's just neither team are looking to engage. JP taking the long bush. I think Ogwin is all the more aware. Oh, neither want to pull the trigger first. Oh, here we go. Carl Tz inside FCAP's jungle. Kyle goes ahead, pulls the retry, and he's swinging away. They both let go. Oh, here comes Flap TZ. Jumping in with the penalty zone. Tempest of Blades up. Kyle Tz, heavy spin. Trying to survive. Kyle Tz at a third of his health as well. Ooh. Kyle Tz barely standing. Either of my kids draw first blood. It's unfortunate. Samford, JP, and Sanji were trying to figure out where exactly he's going to exit through the jungle. And that's the meaning of having priority. I mean, great job on Kyle Tz winning out on that red tree, allowing him to extend the timer for how long that purple buff is going to stick on him. Liquid Echo have to play a little slower because Kyle, he's a menace. Look at him. JP missing the combo as Kyle Tz just dancing on through, looking to take this little wanderer. Ends up spending retribution. Few very low. Sanji with the feather strike. JP popping. 
the Primordial Wrath, no one home. Liquid Echo struggling to find any conversions here four minutes in. Mm -hmm. And even for Super Marco, he's honestly doing a really good job trading against many QT down in this lane. We'll double check on how much gold has been distributed because we did see a couple of river crabs going over to Benny's side. Now, seven seconds left, right? Next turtle is going to start spawning. I think Liquid Echo really need to think about how exactly they're going to attack the map. They can't just focus on Kyle. And yes, you want to be able to relieve pressure from Benny QT, but sacrifices need to be made. All right. Uh, luckily, it was Liquid Echo secured the first turtle. Mm -hmm. So they have that economic advantage, and that's what keeps this gold lead relatively close. Falcons AP Brent barely about 600, 800 ahead. Sanford catches a face full of a fuse combo, and Flappy Zinogwin pulling turtle over their side. 1v1 between Few and Sanford, putting Sanford about a third of his health. Oh, wow. Flap TZ acting as the enforcer, keeping Carl TZ at bay. They're going to be rotating around here. Oh, even Feather Airstrike commitment? That's a huge skill. Spanned by Sanji. Oh. With no one fury, forcing Sanji to flicker back out. Kyle DC secures the turtle. Coming in, jumping through the walls. Carl takes it out on Ogwin. That's one down for Falcons. AP Bren. Now Sanford looking to knock out the Filipino cannon. In comes JP. The flicker out from Flap. Few still dueling with JP. In comes the kill. That's two down for Falcons. AP Bren. JP still off. Ah, oh, Kyle DC takes him out. Few takes out Sanford. Huge trades, delayed wins for the Falcons, but Liquid Echo left reeling. Oh boy, what a trade. What an extended fight this is. And it's not over yet. Tempest of Blade no! They know his flicker was spent. They calculated every moment. These battle spells are such a big indicator of who they want to punish, right? You overextend, you want to keep up with them. You want to make sure that they're always creeping on their leads. Let's look at this replay one more time, right? Because after the Minoan and Fury. This is starting to look like an awkward situation. Sanford's realizing, hold on, we gotta wait for a few to start throwing out those abilities. Once this Julian doesn't have anything left, that's when we go in. Falcons AP Burnley really made the most of the few bodies they had. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, Liquid Echo, for the most part of that short, maybe 30, 40 second engagement, had the numbers advantage. That they did, they did, but let's let's pull it back for a second because now that we're looking at the goal, we can see the real economic difference. Hold up, wow, okay. Trying to dive Super Marco like that. <laughs> hey, the bulletproof vest still on. Yep, has yet to die, but also has yet to take any kills. For the past six and a half minutes, gold lane has been relatively mum. Now, checking on the items here, that is just 200 between uh, Benny Cutie and Super Marco. Well, considering everything, that's actually not too bad. The biggest lead that we are seeing is between the... Oh, boy. 40. Dodges it, still alive, gets a knockout punch. Oh, Kyle no. TZ's down. Sanford gets the KO, outplaying Kyle TZ. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He was stutter stepping in the wrong directions, thinking that, like, hopefully, I'm, am I still on the wall? Wait. Few catches a couple of volleys from Sanji's feathered airstrike, lets him go. Now the turtle fight. Yep, they're gonna have to take their time here. We're still waiting for that Minoan Fury. Oh! The onward by JP, forced to use a primal wrath. Flap TZ, hammering away, Benny Cutie, hitting that turtle to secure by Liquid Echo. Carl TZ with a heavy spin! It's great, it's looking so good for now, but they back away. Now, with Carl TZ, he's timing, uh oh! Oh, Sanford! Oh! Dashing through the iframe, keeping him up. Oh, no! And now Kyle TZ looking for the punish. Step is a place to the sky. Finally, <sighs> Kyle TZ gets one over 40. I'm telling you, this game is just taking your breath away, brother. This is one of those oh! where every single crumb is going to be fought for. And so far, Kyle TZ having the biggest lead in the game before we get into our next fight. This tier one should fall, and hopefully, TLPH, they back off. They've already expanded so many resources. Multiple wins for Liquid Echo down bottom. Forced the flicker out of Super Marco. Took the tier one anyways. And here's another look at that 1v1. Ah, oh, so beautiful, right? Like Sanford, he's thinking about the many different angles that he, go he can go through. But the worst part about it is that if you have iframes, it's hard to land the heavy left hand to give you that extra shield. He would have loved the extra movement speed, but without that shield, he just pops. Yeah, couldn't have his cake and eat it too. He can only really move out of the way or get the shield and then maybe fight a little bit more to get some backup or maybe even kill uh, the Ling. But now, oh no, view the iframe out of the dash. Survives that 2v1. Now in comes Kyle Tizi again. How about it? Kyle versus 40. 
Chapter three, they're backing out. All right, all right, the trilogy isn't done just yet. Kyle might still go for this, but I think for the most part, Sanji has got him covered. Ooh, looking to burst down that far sub, but no, Kyle's just gonna end up taking tier one. Yeah, like Kyle, is, he's so strong right now. He's so far ahead of the game in comparison to Carl TZ, but it's all about decisive action, like I said at the very beginning of the game, right? Despite Liquid Echo, oh, we're losing out on a couple of trades. The gold lead isn't too far. They've gotten two turtles. They're basically trading one for one when it comes down to turns and even during the items right we now are seeing liquid echo putting respect on f cap's name i'm seeing at the very least uh making sure that they've got feather already oh wait sorry not even feather sorry blood wings coming in from sanji to keep himself alive yep uh, and go in between the low econ heroes uh frederick was right uh, mm -hmm. he mentioned that the terizla despite being relatively low gains oh Ooh. no jp come in the flicker combo feather strike from sanji they cancel through down goes benny cutie marco gets his head Sanji's down as well, Kaldizi diving into the back line, finding him, 4D looking to flank him as well, finds no one, now he's the hunted, Ogwin healing them up, 4D says let's regroup, this is not a good fight to take, and that leaves Kaldizi's purple up for them to save her, what a snap! Mm -hmm. That's what you need to see, decisive action time and time again, and it looks like Falcon's AP bread, they're also looking at at least looking for a timing on these waves. Before that Lord spots, we need to start taking them out. And looks like Falcon CP Brand looking to blitz it. 40 here at a third of his health. JP in the same situation. Oh wow, three big bodies put up between the major objective and Falcon CP Bren. Carl Tizi can still get this. The penalty zone coming in. The SOD, no one home. JP taken out. Flap Tizi traded for. That's another one. Super Marco taken out by Kyle Tizi. And there's a big knock up. I mean, no one Fury. Sanford's down. Three for two. But the major objective scored by Falcons. AP Bren all this while. Benny was just working up top. Mm -hmm. He's just farming. He's just getting that compound interest when you leave him alone Cha -cha. in a lane, man. You can hear the money just dropping on the floor. Next tower falls that's not too bad but now the mid-tier one falls for liquid echo and that's where all the problems are going to start beginning right invades are going to be more prominent for kyle tz even honestly with this <laughs> with this considerable lead nine thousand gold on him alone but when we look at the damage dealt you can see that Sanji, again, with less items, less econ, less gold, is still having some relevant numbers. Which is the allegory of this whole situation. Liquid Echo, the more aggressive team. Mm -hmm. If you try to take out Sanji, you still have Benny Cutie and Sanford to deal with. That's not a clear go at a team fight because there's so many damage sources for Liquid Echo. So with that said, Falcons and Brent are playing the map. A huge push up top, in mid, down bottom. Carl, uh, Kyle Tizi did leave that there. Now Carl Tizi. He has a big question to answer, like, who do I hit with a heavy spin? He's, yeah. he's only been using it to disperse, really. Pretty much. I think he's been also just holding it for as long as possible during these turtle fights as well. I mean, I mean even the Lord fight, he basically wasn't even there, so I can't even say just yet. But now, with the Guardian's helmet, that's going to keep him alive a little bit longer. However, Falcon's AP Brent, at this point of time, right, after the Lord push, really good punish, right? You found two kills, you got the Lord, but now you've gotten every single outer turret. You can see now there, there's a much clearer lead for Falcons AP brand 5,000 gold now looking to extend it to at least six or seven if they don't lose the next fight yep the biggest so far in this 12 minute bout now the purple in jeopardy for liquid echo are they going to try to save this for them Ogwin coming in through the line of fire does survive with a motivation roar and Falcon CP Brand just going to be happy with playing footsies. Mm -hmm. I think at this point in time, that motivation roar, especially, oh, yeah, he's already got the flash as well as the favor. He's going to be topping up his teammates really, really easily, allowing Falcon CP Brand to continuously go back to the fight. And himself, too. He has the Oracle. Mm -hmm. So he can take maybe a few hits, maybe a few volleys from Sanji's feathered airstrike and still be there for that delayed Minoan Fury. I think that's been a key in their success so far by pulling the trigger very, very late. Oh, speaking of pulling the trigger here, oh. that's going to be penalties of God. Uh-huh. No one home hits the buff barely. I wonder what Flaptizi was thinking. Mm, I think Flaptizi was like, if I happen to clip him, we go. If nothing, we just back away. There's a lot of disengage mechanics. Yeah, which makes sense. If that was an all-in, he would have done the animation cancel flicker. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's still up. So maybe he was just baiting something out from Liquid Echo. The cavalry did not bite. 
I mean, they, they gotta tickle up somehow, right? Especially when you're going for these coin flips. This is a relatively safe coin flip. Just a little for, bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. bit, right? Just to get a little bit of a <laughs> and get a reaction out of them. But still, Stone Cold from the side of Liquid Echo, if there's any momentum that they have to generate, it's first figuring, figuring out a way to lock Kyle TZ down and then bait Super Marco in. All of this on condition, though. Ogren and Flat TZ have just been absolute brick walls. Lord Dance already upon us. Carl Thiesi and JP showing themselves. The rest of Liquid Echo making themselves scarce. Ogwin spots a couple more. Carl Thiesi working on his purple. And JP holding his ground here at the Y brush. Mm, let's, they're going to take their time with this again. This is the calm before the storm. The waves are pushing in. It's not in the favor of Liquid Echo. They've got to do their housekeeping while Falcons continue to somewhat play this dance. They don't want to overextend here walking into that wide brush, but now that they know where Kalti is, that's a lot of relief. That's right. I wonder if they know where Sanji is too and Benny Cutie. Sanford just barely making his way to the fight. Ogun catches a few hits. The Sanji oh, already spent up. Pepper the blades up. Down goes the far stuff. We don't view into the back line. Benny Cutie spearing away for his life. Kyle Thiesi gonna be kiting through. Few catches Sanford, puts him down to less than half health. Same situation for JP. JP coming in, Earth Shatter, and onward. No one home. They let go of the concealed by JP. Gonna try to relocate. Caught by oh. few. Flicker in back. Ho ho, caught in, and there's a jump by Marco. Gets caught into the wall. They need to kite through. In comes the penalty zone. He's hit hard, and now they're jumping forward. Super Marco on Sanford. Arr! Oh, he finds one and another. Two free kills for Falcons AP. Brent Kyle TZ in trouble. Not before he takes out Kyle TZ. TZ's on the ground. JP and Sanji, the only ones left. They're going to crack right through. The inhibitor of the base is exposed. 15 minutes into this game, and the crystal is under threat. Oh, Sanji gonna throw them out. Can he? There's a wave. The Minoan Fury spent in. They gotta respect the firepower. There's no wave in mid. I mean, 13 seconds on Benny Cutie and Sanford. Can he hold? All He's right. gonna try. Penalty zones out. They force it through. They're gonna force it through the brute force damage of Falcons AP Bren. Draw first blood in this best of five. What a game here to kick things off between these two Filipino giants here. Well done. GG.